afternoon. Yes, who am I speaking to, please? This is Karis. I was um, just calling to uh, fill you in on a couple things. Okay. I have a Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first thing I noticed that was new was uh, the, I would describe it as etheric heat mm-hmm. and the lower chakras because um, I'm actually in a really cold basement, so that was distinct, and uh, my hands actually started to sweat a little bit. And then um, I have a question about what is what is imagined and what is seen because I mean they're both happening in the mind's eye so sometimes I'm on the fence of did I see that or did I choose to imagine it because uh, um, another thing that happened during the tomb it was a tube of light coming out of the crown chakra and like just going out into space and I don't know if you would say I saw or imagined, but I imagine you like being in the sky, it was kind of like a nighttime sky and your hands were like up and out, like projecting light into the tube. And when I did that, the current seemed to get stronger. So, um... Okay, well, uh, let, let me let me help you with that, Karis. Okay, so you're rem- what you are perceiving to be your imagination actually are your higher sensibilities. Okay, so it wasn't a figment of your imagination. Imagination is a false premise because if you imagine it, you instantly create it. Your first eye is misknown as the third eye. So it's your first your first ability to see beyond the spiritual veil without the use of your physical optical cortex. So it's really looking beyond the veil into what actually is real. So you did see me in one of my forms and putting light into your shashuna and delivering it into your crown chakra so that it can be evenly dispersed and gently arouse the kundalini that you have and that was a real occurrence oh okay yeah yeah like i said i definitely felt the uh the current of energy increase as i as i was seeing that Mm -hmm. let me let me ask you another question why do you think that you would imagine something like that (laughs) I mean, I do know a lot about, well, a lot, I would say a lot about you. I've I've actually been watching your videos for a little over a year now, and it was funny because I did exactly what you said uh, when you said once I find some videos of you, I binge watched a lot of videos, and uh, I've been seeing the numbers for a while now just through, um, through scrapping metal with my dad, and it's just funny, his truck with me and him in it comes out to four four thousand four hundred and forty. Mm-hmm. And uh that was slipping me for a long time and then I watched the video with you talking about numbers and you were saying the four forty four and then after it just hit me like, man, I've been seeing that for like over a year now with his truck and our weight over the scale. Mm-hmm. So it's been a lot of a lot of things adding up to uh, to compel me to contact you. But again, why would you think that you imagine that as opposed to it actually being a real occurrence that happened on an etheric plane that's connected to you? That's the question. Um. And one of the things about the the human form, we have to give ourselves the permission to receive what is divine. You have to give yourself the approval of trusting your experience so that you can experience more. If people catalog these things as imaginative dalliances, which are figments of 
non-reality, then you're basically pushing away something that is immortal, that is attempting to really shore you up and show you the reality as it is. So when something magical happens or something divine happens and people say, wow, that was weird, they scratch their heads and they go about their day, they're really pushing away an opportunity to come into alignment with something that is far more greater and fantastic than their mundane reality. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, yeah, it does. Or if you accept the fullness of what it is that you saw and don't even second guess it. I know you believe it, but you know, the moment that you say, did I imagine that or did I really see it? That's kind of what you're doing. If you say, I know I saw that, I know I'm not crazy and I will allow myself to see more. That's the beginning of your evolution spiritually. Okay. Okay, I understand that. And see that it actually uh it throws another another aspect into it because before when you said I, you said you did send the atonement um but you didn't have my full name. Mm-hmm. Another another I know I understand what you just told me, but another thing that I thought that I imagined was because I've had I've had Lakshmi as my um, screensaver on my phone for over a month now or however many months. So pretty sure the image is sucked down into my subconscious. But what I would have said I imagined was I imagined her giving me two gold coins. Mm-hmm. Those two gold coins, if you allow them to download into your life they will change your life amazingly so that's another gift that she gave to you because she's connected to me and she's my mother so she has seen that in your destiny that you have a desire to help people and helping people means changing the complexion of the planet energetically and spiritually and the gods respect that and a lot of times they will give you help and assistance So those gold coins are very powerful, energetic signatures that will download into your life as major events that will help your life be what you want it to be. 